Hello everyone and thank you for joining us again for another installment of BFT Tech Videos. Today we will be going over the Zara and the Kustos A40 or A25 wiring is actually very similar and programming is exactly the same. Um, so first thing I'd like to go over, let's make sure we have the motor wired up correctly. So if you look over here, this coming from this side, it's one, two, and three. So your one is white, your two is red or green. Sometimes the cable comes as a green and then your three is black. All right, and then you will go over to the control board and make sure that we're wired correctly. So you have your 10 would be red, your 11 would be black, and your limit wire would be number 42. Um, now, if you were gonna hook up uh, motor two, it would be the same, you know, the motor hookup would be exactly the same for motor two, and then you would take your red and 14, your black and 15, and your white limit would go to 43 for motor two. Um, to go over a little bit more in depth into the board, uh, a couple things you want to take a look at first is your faults. So you want to make sure that your fault lights are all on as far as your stop light needs to be on, your, phobo, your photo light needs to be on, and of course your bar light. If any of those lights, any of those three lights are off, you will not be able to program the board and it will not run. So either make sure your jumpers are in place or whatever safety device you are using is put in there. Um, also these lights on this side this is your limit switch lights you'll notice there's four of them and only one is lit right now i'm gonna go over that a little bit so the two lights to the left are motor one and your two lights to the right are motor two whichever light is on is the limit switch you are not on okay so let me repeat that so if you notice the first one or when you get to one a little closer the first light is swc1 the second light is swo1 so that's motor one closed motor one open we are currently in the closed position, so the closed light is off. So that's just a little tip for when you're trying to figure out how to program it. Um, I will also go over the uh, potentiometers. So you have four different potentiometers, and if you notice, they all have a little arrow um, pointing in a direction, and you would just kind of look at it like a clock, right? So to the left would be nine o'clock, to the top would be 12 o'clock, and of course to the right would be three o'clock. So your T1 potentiometer is actually your close timer. So if you don't want a close timer, you make sure it's turned all the way counterclockwise and your close timer would be off. Um, if you want it on, of course it can go, if you turn it all the way clockwise, it will be about 120 seconds. So, you know, more or less you move it to where you want according to the seconds you'd want to use. Potentiometer number two, this is your force potentiometer. It's important, a lot of people leave this all the way off and they try to program and their gates don't move. Uh, because you have your force all the way off. So I normally like to put it between 12 and 3 for first run just to make sure um, we have enough force uh, to get the programming done. Um, potentiometer number 3, that is your, um, excuse me, the slowdown distance, right? So the, the, I normally have this all the way off. So normally this is in the counterclockwise position all the way off to make your slowdown distance the shortest. And last but not least, this is your T4 potentiometer. This is how you go uh, between your leaf delay or just making it one motor. Uh, for instance, if you just want to use one motor, which is like our demo, you'll notice our T4 is all the way off. And if you want to use two motors, you would turn T4 up to at least nine o'clock. If you have it below nine o'clock, you'll still get only one motor working. Um, also, you'll notice there are some dip switches here. I'm really only going to go into number five. Uh, because dip switch number one is defaulted always on and that's for remote programming and of course your dip switch number five is for photo closing so you want your photo beam to work only while closing um, that's my basic setup you know I have T1 all the way off because we're not using the closed timer T2 to 12 T3 all the way counterclockwise and T4 all the way counterclockwise because we're using one motor um, of course you want to make sure that your limit switches are done correctly so this part you would actually just, it's a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, Phillips head screw, take that out, you'll be able to slide this piece off, and then this comes right out. And you will see your limit switches are exposed. So these are your limit switches, and this is your magnet. Before you get started, either make sure that your limit is lined up, or your magnet is lined up with one of the limits, or in between the limits. Sometimes when they're packaging, the magnet is a little further, and you try to move, and it doesn't actually do its thing. So it'll kind of get stuck back here or you know, inside this area. So you wanna make sure your magnet's in the middle 
before you start programming and you should be good to go. Um, so now, of course, anytime you change a potentiometer, you have to push and hold the S3 button to get an auto set. Anytime you change a dip switch, you have to push and hold the S2 button. Now this is a new setup, so we're gonna have to push and hold the S3 button to save any of the settings that we've made and also to get our motor programmed. So we'll push and hold the S3 button. Get a flashing. And now it should start running. I'll take this time now to grab my remote so I can program my remote to the board, which would be your S1 button as soon as this is done. Should give us one run open. Gets it slow down and then stops on the limit. All right, we should be good to go. All right, so now the next step would be to program our remotes. All right, and that is actually a quick little spot. You know, your S1 button is the one on top. All right, and a, you know, a fast, you have to make sure you get the hidden button. You notice you push both buttons, there's a delay, right? So you click S1, you'll get a flashing green light, squeeze both buttons, you'll see the green light turn solid, you release, and then quickly tap the button you want to use, and you'll get a, a fast flash over, and then it should time out. And of course, good to go. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, let us know.